Hello guys, today we will be performing the experiment of adaptive delta modulation that is ADM on digital communications. Okay, so now we already know what is a DM. In case of DM, the major problem that we have is the um, slope overload, overload error. Why does that occur? In case of slope overload, this signal which will trap the actual signal is uh, having a slope which is lesser than the actual signal. So it cannot trap the actual signal properly. One of the ways to improve this is to increase the step size of the tracking signal. If we do that, we will be able to track our signal but it will generate a lot of granular, granular noise which is unacceptable. Therefore, we use an ADM in which the variable step size helps us track the signal properly. So basically, if you see the circuit, you will come to see that the comparator is the basic uh, system performing uh, the actions required to get us an ADM output. So, what does the comparator do? It will give, it will take a uh, sine wave as an input and the other input will be a sample delayed uh, DAC output which we will get from the DAC output block, block which we will see in the circuit later. So, how does this work? If the comparator compares these two signals and the current signal is greater than the last one, it will give us the output as high which will be 1. Otherwise, if the signal which is the current signal is later, lesser than the last sample, then the output will be 0. This will generate our action ADM signal. Okay, so here this circuit comprises of a counter, adder or subtractor, there are two paths and a latch that will be the DAC output. So, the ADM output which will be 1 or 0 depending on the signal is greater than or less than, uh, will have the final DAC output. If the, uh, initially the counters will be set to 0, then when ADM output is 1, that is the given signal is greater than the last signal, the counter count will increase to 1. The uh, output of the adder subtractor block is nothing but DAC plus counter. Last DAC input was 0 and this is 1, so 0 plus 1 will give us 1. That will be the final value of DAC that will be latched. Here we will see that the uh, latch value or DAC value goes from 0 to 1 which will give us a step size of S. Later on, the counter value if it increases to 2, then the last value was 1 plus 2, the final output of the adder will be 3. That will be latched to the DAC. It will work on so on for 4 steps and it will track the first half of the increasing half of the positive half of the signal. If the ADM output goes 0, the counter for the ADM output is something else which is in the other part. So, it will count from the initial value that is 1. So, the ADM output is 0, counter is 1. Here, it will have a subtractor. So, it will subtract last DAC output and this value. So, here we will have this value minus the counter value which will give us 9. This way, the ADM counter will go on working and have 4 positive inputs that is 4 1s and track the increasing half of the signal and 4 zeros for the decreasing half of the signal. Okay. So now as we have seen that we have to give our sine wave input from the generator to the comparator. So first we will just check what is the uh, frequency and amplitude for the signal. Okay, so after connecting the sine wave input, we will just press the opposite button. And measure. So here you can see for channel 1 the frequency is approximately 1 kilohertz and the amplitude is 2.64 volts peak to peak. So now as we connected the sign, so 
we will just get this sign input to the comparator input that is the uh, non inverting terminal of the comparator input whereas we will provide the dac output as the second input which will be the inverting terminal of the comparator also this block here is just a sample in whole circuit so this will be driving this adm logic implementation circuit to have the proper synchronization and uh, convert the clock signals we will have a controlling circuit for that we have to connect the point a to the point b that is provide provide one control signal and point c to point d okay so next we will study how this adm logic implementation works okay so now for one input we will take the actual input which is the sine wave for the other channel we will take the dac output and the other part will be to be ground and to the third channel we are going to connect the adm output which will be the output of the comparator block right here so now the output of these channels can be observed on the dso that is the input wave the dac output and the adm output if you try to overlap the sine wave and the dac output you will observe that for the increasing part there are four increasing step sizes and for the decreasing part there are four decreasing step sizes also when the adm logic is 1 that is it is high the step size will al always go on increasing whereas when the adm logic is 0 the step size will always go on decreasing now we'll just see the AD, uh, dac output to observe it properly so this is the final dac output which we'll observe properly here you can see that we have a uh, variable step sizes that is this step size goes on increasing so now we'll have the calculations to observe what is the uh, relation between this various step sizes for calculating the uh, various step sizes we will go to the cursor option and select the type as amplitude and the source as the channel in which the dac output is connected now we will take the cursor to the lowest position of the first step and the highest position of the first step here you can observe that the first step size is approximately 200 mv if we move on to the second step you will observe that the second step size is approximately 440 mV which is approximately twice of the first step size that is 2s for the third step we find that the third step is approximately for Six forty millivolts again, which is again approximately three times of S, and for the fourth step two, you'll find that it is approximately eight forty millivolts, which is four S. So from here we can say. that every time this step size is adapting itself to track the so now as we have seen the three inputs for uh, a sine wave input we have seen the three outputs so we will similarly see uh, 
the outputs of DAC and ADM for a square wave input. So as we have connected this generator, remove this. Okay. So here down you will find that there is a function generated block with the adjustable frequency of a square wave. Connect this square wave to the comparator input. Also, we will connect this square wave to the first channel. When you opposite the DSO, you will again find the three signals. First one being the square wave input, second as the DAC signal and the third one as the ADM output. So, uh, we have to first set the frequency of the square wave to 200 hertz. So, we have to just adjust this frequency using the frequency adjust spot to approximately 200 hertz. Okay, so now this is approximately 200 hertz. For this, if we increase the scale so as to observe the signals and stop the DSO, you will find that for the logic level 1, the DAC output goes on hunting, that is it fluctuates between the levels 1 and 0. See, it is fluctuating between 1, 0, 1, 0. As it is fluctuating between 1, 0, 1, 0, the ADM output should also be fluctuating between 1s and 0s for the part where the signal is constant. Hence, we get this kind of an ADM output. So finally, after studying the ADM experiment, what are the benefits of this? Why do we actually use ADM when we have a DM? Firstly, for ADM, we use only one bit to encode one sample, which is very good as it reduces the bandwidth height. The second thing is, the step size is variable, which help us, helps us to track the signal properly without any slope overload error or granular noise problem. Lowest bandwidth is required. As we use only one bit, the bandwidth is very less in comparison to DM, PCM, etc. The bit rate is moderate. The sampling frequency is variable between 48 to 64 kilohertz. Uh, now, as the signal can provide a best, better uh, tracking of the input, therefore the SNR is improved highly in comparison to the DM. The applications for ADM are in speech and images. Thank you.